All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about how to start the downswing correctly. There's really one move, but a two-part move that we're gonna show you in today's video. If you're like most golfers, like all of us, we really want two things, JT, right? We wanna be able to, first things first, hit the ball consistently solid, and then second, after we hit it consistently solid, we'd really like to be able to hit it high, far, and pretty straight. Maybe draw. A little bit of a draw pattern maybe would be nice, right? And if we can combo the solidness of contact with high, far, straight with a little curve, I think uh, you know the golfer would be happy. And I know you and I have coached together for a while. I've seen you do a lot of coaching and we see a lot of the same golfers. And probably like 10% of the total golfing population we see does this one move, this transition from like top of back swing to kind of halfway down correct. Yep. And probably the rest of them really need to improve this area. And so if you'll take a setup in there, yep. JT, let's talk about like, okay, what are those two things? And then let's go through some of the feels, drills, and, and details of each one. For sure. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, the movement is coupled, which is really important, right? So there's two movements sort of happening at one time. Think about rubbing your belly, patting your head, right? Yeah. That's tough for a lot of people, but yeah. maybe it might help your golf game to do that a little bit. Yeah. That's really that important movement to start the downswing is going to be a coupled motion. Um, and the first motion that we like to see of that coupled motion is one where we are moving the rib cage down, forward, really trying to get the sternum ahead of the belly button. Okay. So that's an easy way to think about it. We were talking about this earlier and a cool way to think about it too is we get the low point out of the way early. So we're fixing mm. the, the low point issues that a lot of us have early on in the swing, which is very, very helpful for uh, reducing the chaos that we're gonna feel down near impact, which is what everybody feels, right? The, the feeling that we wanna have here is, you know, we're gonna go up to the top, make a nice turn on my backswing. Here, what I'm trying to do is really feel like some bracing, maybe in my right leg, right foot moving my torso really down forward that gets the low point control kind of out of the way yeah so the reason it does that is because by moving my rib cage forward it helps put some force on the club as well mm. which is a big thing we talked about um, and kind of putting that force on the club getting the butt end of the club to go more forward is how we improve on our low point yeah so that's kind of step one of the process, making sure we get our low point more forward. Yeah, can, and can you hit one just with that, JT? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I want to go through that. So I'll kind of go through this process slow so you guys can see it here. Yeah. Just really trying to get that forward. And that's like, and we'll, we'll show some Tiger and, and stuff on the, on the screen of them, you know, breaking that lead side when they come down. Yeah. And I know we have the quadrant set up for those who haven't seen that before for us. You want to kind of walk us through what that is and like where you would be moving with the upper body? Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, the reason we have these set up is to help you kind of orient, orientate yourself while you're swinging. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is, you know, as we swing back, you know, we're feeling like, okay, maybe we're in this back right quadrant. But what we want to do is we want to feel like when we're pushing the rib cage forward, we're pushing ourselves at an angle, kind of 45 degrees towards this front quadrant. Okay. And what that allows us to do is that keeps our arms and our hands a little bit more behind us. Yeah. rather than that spinning open that we see so much, right? For people who chronically slice the ball and yep. early extend and all those things. Yeah. Most of the time, they really kind of move into this quadrant with their shoulders right away. Uh -huh. And that's what causes, you know, see if I do that immediately, now we have over the top, Steve, yeah. and a lot of other fun things with that. And let's do one more of the good one, and then we'll kind of dive into that second part of the arms. And for those watching too, this sort of front right, like maybe this is quadrant one, maybe this is two, yep. three, four, we're saying we're kind of going on this angle with the torso into that first quadrant. And we'll dig into that second piece like you mentioned. But let's, yeah, let's kind of pop one more out just with that feel. Yep. And when you're feeling this, JT, are you feel? I know you said the sternum for it. Are you feeling like the rib cage, the lat? What are you feeling? When you're yeah, doing so that? basically when we're, when we're doing this, we're just trying to move really kind of this whole lead side forward on top of this left leg. What we wouldn't want is for the leg to go faster, too fast. That would be one way we could run into some issues yeah. where if our leg goes too fast this way, we actually lose the brace. We have nothing to really move the rib cage down and forward with. So it. it's important that the instigator of this movement is more of your core and rib cage, not your legs. And, and one other question with that from a timing perspective, I think we're kind of talking transition. So it's like from top of backswing to like 
hands hip high, kind of halfway down-ish? Yes, so uh, really from top of the backswing to lead arm parallel to the ground. Okay. So maybe a, there, maybe a little bit past Just it. like the first early part of the downswing. Yeah, right? first early okay. part of the downswing. Cool, let's pop one more out with that and then we'll do the second part. Yep. So here we go, it's making sure ribs are getting, you know, forward, down, ahead. Yeah, it's solid. Coupled motion, there's two pieces to this. We can go in, in fact, let me hop in there, JT, yeah, and we'll switch back. For sure. So, as we're doing this downward motion, right, as I'm going down and I'm feeling this down and forward, and for me, I kind of am feeling the same thing there where my tendency would be I get the knee and the hip going, but the chest, shoulder, sternum get back yep. too far inside out. Yep. Many people maybe kind of get everything going this way, like you said, but as we're going down and forward into this first quadrant, the second piece of the puzzle, if that gets a solid contact, so the forward motion gets takes care of the solid contact early. Yeah. The second piece is what makes it go high, far, and relatively straightish, yeah. which is where the club gets delivered. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And where the club gets delivered is going to be partially based on how the arms get delivered, which will be based on where the shoulders, shoulders go. Yes. Yeah. So kind of what we talked about before is when you come down, the shoulders being a bit more closed early, just from that first little part. Yeah. Or open will control the direction we swim. Exactly. So the geometry is built into how the shoulders are working. The low points built into kind of how this big mass of your body is working. Yeah, okay. And so, let's, let, in fact, let me hop, you, hop yep. back in there, JT. Yep. So let's do like the bad version where the body moves forward this way, yep. or the body's starting to go forward, but the shoulders are opening too soon. Yes, so. You don't have to hit, but just like a motion. Yeah, so this would be kind of the bad version, and maybe even halfway bad version where we go up to the top, a uh, rib cage does move forward, but the shoulders open as we do that. You can see how high the club is, yeah. right? Really, really high. Going to be thin shots. Heads moving cuts, too far forward. This heads way. moving too far forward. Way too low, you know, especially with a longer club. Yeah. So it's going to be very hard to tell your brain to do that when you have a five iron in your hand. You're trying to hit up in the air. So. And that's so important too. Like when you guys are watching that, the reason it's not just the forward motion for solid contact. Is because if you did just that and open too much, like JT mentioned, you'd be way too over the top, poor contact. Yeah, pulls. heel shots, I mean, all kind of bad shots. Yeah, okay. So, uh, really important that the couple is not shoulders opening and rib cage going forward. That does not work. So, again, yeah. the quadrants would be hey, my shoulders would go towards this quadrant where my left foot is, no good. That's gonna be out to end, big slices. Instead, what we like to see is for the uh, kind of upper body to go forward towards this front quadrant and the arms as a byproduct of staying more closed will end up closer in this back quadrant here. Okay. So that's how we control the arms with the low point or the geometry with the low point. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let's, let's hit another one with that, JT. Yeah. So again, just trying to bunt these out here, guys, really trying to make sure I'm keeping my rib cage forward. I'm keeping my arms back from keeping my chest closed. Yep. We don't want to open the chest too much. Again, that, is, that has a tendency to send the club, you know, too far out and over the top. Yeah, really solid, dude. Let me try one of those. Yeah, for sure. Very solid. Get in there. You guys can hear that and see that. Yeah. So that's probably JT's hitting, you know, I don't know, that's a two or three yard draw. Very, very tight, yeah. solid contact. So most of the golfers we see, either, the, like if you're struggling with contact, big time fat shots or fats and thins, a lot of them, JT, they don't get the first part right. They don't get the forward. So they're just back here the whole time. Exactly. But if you can get into just spending some time getting your body working forward into this first quadrant, and again, notice in the beginning part of the early downswing, it's all of the segments. Yeah. It's all of the segments. Everything's getting forward. All of them forward. Let me, let me yeah. hit one like that. Again, that, that tells the brain guys that we're gonna have a good golf shot on the way down. We're gonna control the low point, which is the most concerning thing mm. um, to go play golf. You and know, I like how you said that a lot, where you're like, you get you get the contact piece done early. Yeah, early. Because so it's not late and chaotic. Yes, exactly. So when, when you have a golf swings that are very poor, have um, basically a impact dynamic issue, meaning they can't control the low point and a geometric problem very late in the swing. Really good swings yeah. have geometry figured out very soon along with low point figured out very soon. So what, I, what that means in my mind is a bad golfer who doesn't go forward is back and they're trying to figure out how to hit it solid. Exactly. And there come the errors. Yeah, and there come the errors. But you're saying, okay, if we can get that built in early, 
then we've got the opportunity to do some of that other good stuff. Yes. Let me do one more. Exactly. And I also like how when we're going through, you were kind of saying, hey, if, as you're doing this and feeling the body in the quadrant one, again, this is just the early part of the downswing. I'm not going to continue doing that, you know, forever per se. Yeah. But it's the early part of the downswing. The pitch of the shoulders is also kind of in that first quadrant. Yes, for sure. The angle of that shoulders, exactly. And that's also the angle of the force on the club, right? Yeah. So that, so now if we put a laser all the way out, see how far that low point is? Yeah. So again, that's what we're telling our brain is that, hey, we want to do everything here to get the low point forward and then figure out how to hit the ball. Get out of that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Got it. Okay. So here. And I'm feeling kind of like my left side of my rib cage and my shoulder primarily yes, is what I'm feeling. But I'm, keeping, sure. I'm feeling like my shoulders are staying a little bit closed as I'm doing that. I kind of have a little like Tommy Fleetwood yes, feel. For sure. I, don't know if I look like Tommy Fleetwood, but feel like Tommy Fleetwood. Okay, down and forward. Shoulders closed. Yeah, I mean, that feels really nice yeah, for me. So good. Big and that's a high, you know, I don't know, maybe five yard draw. draw shot. So if you're the player who comes too far over the top, you hit the ball low, you hit pulls, slices, lack distance, they might want to live, probably not might want to. Yeah, definitely want to live in that pretty exaggerated, yes. you know, for, for quite a while. Exactly. So we could say that, hey, if you're the golfer that struggles with over the top, hey, look, we're going to always be trying to get to the quadrant. So we always need to get our low point forward, but we're going to feel as though our back stays towards the target. Our hands stay more in this back quadrant near our right foot. Right. All those things need to happen for the golfer that pulls and slices. So exactly. get the low point forward and then, you know, continue trying to feel those pieces. Exaggerated. Yep, exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. So good. And great that's shot another... for a big high draw. Somebody who struggles over the top, that's the things you want to feel. They need a lot of that. So if we're in the, you know, the golfer's in the 10% who kind of does that good and has the push and draw we would say, hey, they can still feel those and still do those early, but then they need to just learn how to get out of that. Yes, exactly. So they need to learn how to get out of that initial scenario. So probably what happens is they're just going from that first place for too long, right? Yeah. So they need to imagine a, you know, hitting a quadrant would be a great way to think about it as well in terms of like, hey, I can't get out of this quadrant. So if I keep going too far, there's a brick wall here, yep. then that's no good. Yep. Eventually I have to start that process of going towards that let Front it turn the corner. corner. Exactly. And again, if you're, I, I didn't mean to get off track there. If you're in that 90% <laughs> percent, which is where most people are. Yeah. Don't be, please. don't be shy about this first one. I'll just do one more. Yeah. Here. Don't get too crazy here. No. Rib cage and shoulder to quadrant one and forward. Yeah. Feeling the back staying towards the target a little, the arm staying in a little bit. Yeah. Just for that beginning little phase. Looking for kind of a high five yard draw shot here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that feels really nice. There it is. Perfect. Yeah, if you so like good. little high, uh, little yeah. draws like that. <laughs> That'll work. So listen, guys, if, in terms of starting the downswing correct, getting the low point taken care of early, like JT said, that's a, I really like that little nugget. Getting the body forward to get the low point early, keeping the arms and clubs in. Use this little quadrant, use video feedback as always, and use your ball flight. Like if you're still hitting it low, pulls and fades, you're probably not doing these enough. Mm -hmm. If you're hitting too big a push and hook, you might be doing it too long. If you want to link up with JT, we'll put his info down below. JT's down here in Florida. He's all over the world. If you want to link up with JT, <laughs> get some awesome in-person coaching. CoronaGolf.com, as always. Any comments uh, or any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching.